Game one, were they doing in game one what you feel they should be doing now, or have they been playing the same identical coverage through the four games this entire series? I'm talking about Boston. Same coverage. They they really Same have coverage. made no adjustments. Right. Like I said, they blitzed three times in pick and roll. Steph Curry has ran right. 74 direct picks as the ball handler in pick and roll. They blitzed three of those. So, so, so. Three of those. So and, explain, and by the way, they so targeted Al Horford. Al Horford right. has the, 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 the lion's share of those uh, 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 at, at guarding the screen Absolutely. of those 74. He's 41 of those have been with Al Horford involved in the screen and roll. So, so how do you explain the 30-point swing that took place in game one when Golden State was up 15 and then they ended up being down 15 from the mid the way to the third quarter to the fourth quarter? What happened in that particular moment? Remind well, us. Well, some of this was, of course, the shooting that, that Boston had in that fourth quarter. They outscored right, them 40 to 16. They were 9 for 12 on threes. Eight of those nine makes were on direct drive and kick passes. I, I, thought, mm-hmm. I, I thought that was a huge adjustment. I talked about this after game okay. two. The, the adjustment was – you know, Golden State having better closeouts, being in rotation, running guys off the line. They did that masterfully in game two. On the offensive end, you know, I think some of the Warriors' problems at times are that they go away from Steph Curry pick and rolls. Like, yes, mm-hmm. the Warriors are great playing their movement sets. They're great paying out of uh, post splits and high splits and getting into all that movement. Guard, guard screen, slips to the basket. They're great at that. Mm-hmm. But against drop coverage, you just milk it. You go to it over and over like they did in game three. Steph took 12 shots against got- drop coverage. It's the most he's ever taken in a game. Like, you have to go to that. And he's, by the way, he scored 18 points. That's 1.5 points per possession, if my math is right. correct, which I'm yep. not great at math, but I think it that's is, right. It is. It no, is. No. It is. So, so I, 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 think, I think they went away from that a little bit in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter of game, of game one. That's not to say they didn't run any pick and rolls, but they went mm-hmm. away from what was working. And right now, they're okay. not going away from it. They're just they're milking that play. Okay. All right, last question. What you talked about, how Udoka came out and said, we ain't changing our coverage. We're going to continue to do what we've been doing, particularly in drop coverage against Steph Curry. We're going to play our game. Is it possible he could be lying, understanding that this series is going, was going long all along? And why show them? Until it's time. In terms of what? Because we've got the versatility. We're the Boston Celtics. We've got the versatility. We can man up. We can go zone. We can do a lot of things against you. We don't have to be in drop coverage. We we can make sure we make the necessary adjustments. Is it possible that Udoka's just saying that because he understood all along this series is probably going six or seven games, and we don't want to show our hand until it's absolutely necessary. And then once we throw the monkey wrench into the game plan, they're going to be stuck because they've been reliant on this Steph Curry all along that once we blitz him, once we sit up there and throw a monkey wrench into their game plan, all of a sudden it's going to be too late for them to make the necessary adjustments. Is that possible? Because I look at this right now as a chess match that's going to that's gonna end up going down between Udoka and Kerr. That's going to be just as significant as the players on the court right now. And let's give Steve Kerr props because he made the moves that he had to make in terms of putting Draymond on the bench, going small, what have you. We saw what he did in order to win game four. I'm just wondering, is Yudoka going to pull something out of his hat? What do you make of that? Again, I, I absolutely think it's possible that he starts to mix things up as we go forward and we play these last two or three games of the series. It's absolutely possible. The the point I want to make to that question, and and I played with some really good offensive players, and and even as an okay offensive player myself, when when you give smart offensive players and smart offensive teams the same coverage over and over on any place, it doesn't not just high pick and rolls, the same coverage over and over, they are going to take advantage of that. Within a series, you have to be willing to mix things up at times. And I'm not saying they blitz him for 48 minutes on every single right. pick and roll or they switch every single post split, but you have to mix it up. Giving Steph Curry a steady diet of the same coverage and over and, and over, over, he's too good. Yeah. He's too good. And, and, and you, you, you brought up the question about adjustments. Like, the Warriors haven't had to make any adjustments offensively in this series. It's just like, they're doing this. They're going to keep doing this. Okay, we're going to keep doing that. And it's worked. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.